so I'm finally back with another video. I am so excited to get this video done. I've actually tried to film it about two times. I tried to film it earlier this morning, um, but um, I couldn't. So I'm going to be talking about my labor and delivery story. A lot of people were asking for it, even though I did not um, do like the whole uh, pregnancy journal type of video thing because I didn't want like I didn't want it to turn into a job while I was pregnant. Um, but I did say that I would um, go over at least my labor and delivery story and I will um, introduce you or show you guys the baby. Um, she's sleeping in the other room right now. So I'm trying to get it, most of the talking part of the video done so that I can just bring her in real quick um, while she's still asleep. Um, if she happens to be awake then, then she's awake. Um, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, so pretty much I had my baby shower March 13th and um, if you guys follow me on Instagram we saw a lot of pictures from there on there we like going into the first and second and third that week I planned on getting um, my hair done I planned on getting my nails done my feet done getting all groomed and ready to go uh, preparing for my baby um, just like little stuff like cosmetic kind of thing not cosmetic but you know like physical things that I couldn't I knew that once the baby came I wasn't gonna be able to do like doing my hair uh this is the first time that my hair has actually been washed since my baby shower <laughs> and mind you it's almost the end of April my baby shower was March 13th whole nother story but I knew once the baby came I wasn't going to have that much time and you know or I would have had to like lose sleep in order to get another thing done and I would rather get the sleep than worry about certain things. Anyway so I had this whole plan written out. Um, I didn't have like I had just started working on my birth plan the week after my baby shower um, and it wasn't it wasn't done. Um, so March 30th came around and that was my first of my upcoming weekly uh, appointments with my doctor. Um, I was 37 weeks in three days, I believe, um, on the 30th of March. So I went to her and she checked me and everything. My weight was fine. Um, my iron was low, um, so she did prescribe me some iron um, as well that day. She said my iron levels were a little low, so she did prescribe me some iron. Um, and she did let me know on that on the 30th that I was one centimeter dilated but she said um, I will probably be one centimeter for a while um, since I still had about two and a half weeks left to my due date um, now I don't know what the statistic is for first-time moms and things like that everyone was saying oh she'll probably come late because this is your first baby oh she'll probably come early so I don't really know um, but I just know that in my head, I wasn't at least expecting her for another week, um, at the very least. Um, which was fine, you know, whenever she decided to come is when she decided to come. Um, but, so that night, Wednesday night, um, after I left the doctor, I came home, I went to sleep around 9 o'clock, I want to say 8.30, 9 o'clock, and... I got up around 11 to go to the bathroom. So I went to the bathroom, I peed, I came back to bed, and I, my stomach had, had started hurting. Like, I guess it felt like cramps, like cramps. Um, I don't really know what menstrual cramps feel like because I don't, I didn't have them. Um, so my doctor told me that contractions kind of feel like menstrual cramps, but worse. So for me, it just felt like cramps. Like I was, my stomach was cramping. I'm like, well, maybe I have to go to the bathroom. So I stayed up for a little bit. I sat in the living room because I didn't want to like squirm around in the bed and wake Fernando because he did have to work the next morning. So I sat in the living room um, for a little bit. And hopefully, I was trying to hope for at least either I go to the bathroom or the pain will pass. Um, but it didn't. And then in the meantime, I kept going to the bathroom about every two to three minutes like I literally like I would sit down watch TV for a little bit and then I would feel the urge to pee I would go to the bathroom and like a little drizzle will come out like nothing major not a lot just a little drizzle so I was like okay so I woke Fernando up a little bit I'm like I don't know if I'm having contractions 
Um, but my stomach is hurting and like I'm going, I didn't even mention the whole pee thing. Matter of fact, I didn't tell him about the whole pee thing right away. Cause I just, I didn't even know what that was. I didn't know what to call it. I was just like, whatever. But it's like, I think I'm having contractions. I'm not sure. Um, and I had set the timer on my phone to see how far, how far apart they were. Sometimes they were seven minutes apart. Sometimes they were eight minutes apart. Um, so he was like, well, call your doctor and see what she says. So I called her. I didn't call her right away. I did wait like another hour or so. I ended up calling her around 2.30 in the morning. And I told her, I said, no, I'm having contractions. They're about seven, eight minutes apart. What should I do? She was like, well, you were only one centimeter today. Um, don't, you know, don't worry about it. Wait till you are five minutes apart and you cannot talk through your contractions. So I said, okay. So that's pretty much what I did. I And I, I literally did not fall back asleep after 2.30. Like I didn't fall asleep. Once I was up at 11 o'clock, I did not fall back asleep. Um, I was sitting there, I had contractions, they were coming. Um, I was setting the timer on my phone, but they still weren't five minutes apart. I'm gonna be honest, like one minute they will be three minutes apart, next minute they'll be six minutes apart, next minute they'll be eight minutes apart. So it wasn't like even a consistent, like every five minutes or, you know, it, it was just all over the place. Like so I would sometimes get them back to back, whatever. So Fernando got up as normal, like he was getting ready for work. He got, he got ready for work. He was like dressed in his work clothes. Um, <laughs> yeah, he was literally dressed in his work clothes, like ready to leave. And I had to work Thursday as well, which is March 31st. I had to work as well. So I was like, well, if the contractions pass, I'll just go to work and whatever. So I had already texted my coworker and I was like, hey, I may or may not be in, depending on how these contractions feel. Now, my last day of work was supposed to be April 1st. Um, so I had two more days left for work and I had all intentions of literally going out those last two days, you know, and starting my maternity leave. Around 5.30, Fernando was like, are you sure you want me to go to work? He has, he leaves at 5.45. Like, are you sure you want me to go to work? You know, we can just go to the hospital and see what they say. So I'm like, oh, well, she told me to wait till five minutes apart. And at that time, I'm already like on all fours because the contractions were painful. Um, they were bearable, but they were just like in a pain that I, I've never experienced before. It was just like... So I was like, mm. I was like, no, go to work, and um, if I need you, I'll call you. Cause I had already, I had called my, I called my mom and told her I was like, hey, I'm having contractions, so I'll keep you posted as well. If you know we are gonna go to the hospital. So, and then I was like, no, I think we should go to the hospital. So no, I. So literally, like, before Fernando walked out the door, I was like, I think we should go to the hospital. Like, he was leaving the room to leave for work. And I was like, I think we should go to the hospital. And at least see what they say. And if they send us, you know, the worst thing that they could happen was they send us home. So we went, the hospital that we went to was about 10 minutes away from here. So it was really, really fast to get there. Um, but literally within those 10 minutes, I had... I probably had like one or two contractions within those 10 or 15 minutes from our house to the hospital and I couldn't talk through them but they weren't as close together as my doctor had said so I got to the hospital and I was already registered at the hospital or, or whatever because I knew I was having my baby there so I was already registered so there was no paperwork for me to fill out um, you know they just you know checked me in and whatever so I had to wait for the resident doctor to come first to check me and make sure that I was actually in labor before they called my actual doctor. Um, so he came in, I was probably in the room, they admitted me, I was probably in the room for about an hour. The nurse was monitoring, monitoring me or whatever. So they checked to see if my water broke and how many centimeters I was dilated. So they checked to see if my water broke and they did say my water did break I just, and my water did break and he checked and saw that I was four centimeters dilated. Um, and he was like, yeah, you're four centimeters, the baby's coming today. Like, I was like, oh shit, like, ooh. So they didn't send me home, they admitted me. And I was already in a, they, the room they put me in was already a labor and delivery room. And 
the process began like pretty much up until then up until then I, I was really nervous because my hospital bag was kind of packed but not really um so I brought the hospital bag that I did have packed I was throwing things in there throughout the night just in case um but yeah so the baby it was March 31st and the baby was coming it was about six in the morning when we got to the hospital so after that they just assigned to be a nurse and she pretty much took care of me the whole time honestly for the majority of the time I did absolutely nothing we watched TV my my parents ended up coming um, meet me at the hospital and hung out with me while I was waiting to get more dilated waiting for the baby to come down um, after about two or three hours um, two or three man eh, not two three maybe like four hours or so after being there they asked me did I want an epidural because I I did have to literally breathe through every contraction I couldn't talk through them um, they were like you said they were painful but they were bearable um, so I was like no I don't want an epidural like you know, I don't need it. I can stick it out through the pain. It's not that big of a deal. Um, two reasons I didn't want to get an epidural um, in my head was, one, once I took the epidural, I cannot get up from the bed. I can walk around or anything like that. Two, um, in my mind, I was like, well, if I get the epidural, I'm not going to know exactly where I'm pushing from when it's time to push. So I don't want an epidural for that reason. Um... But then um, my doctor had called and she said, you know, you've been up all night. Like, I, I did not sleep. Literally, I got up at 11. It was already about 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, and I had not slept at all between that time. She was like, you know, either I was like, you should either get an epidural so you can fall asleep or um, I, I don't know what the other thing is called, but it's something to make you to make you go to sleep. Um but the only thing about that one is I didn't want to take that one because they said it did affect the baby and the baby would be drowsy as well. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to take anything that would affect her um, abilities as well. So I was like, I don't want to take that. Um, so she said, you know, you should consider getting the epidural so that way you can at least um, not feel the pain of um, as much pain as the contraction so you can fall asleep. Because literally... Um, my contractions still weren't five minutes apart. They were still like 10 minutes apart. But literally I would start to doze off. And then I would wake up as soon as contraction came. I would start to doze off and wake up as soon as contraction came. Um, so I literally was not sleeping. So I like, all right, let me think about it. And I talked to Fernando and my mom. And I was like, you know, I don't know. I really don't want to. I didn't plan on it. I wanted to like just bear it all my mother's like there's no reason for you to suffer like that's all she kept saying she said there's no reason for you to suffer like just get the epidural and I talked to Fernando who was like you know if it's really bothering you get the epidural I do want you to have you know rest and you know you need you're gonna have to have energy to push so I said fine so I ended up getting the epidural um which went fine you know everyone does have to leave the room when you get the epidural um which is fine. I, I guess it was it didn't hurt to me. I don't know. People a lot of people have told me that it hurts or whatever. Um, I do know you have to sit very still, but for me the epidural was fine. Um and then that was it. So I got my epidural. So literally for the rest of the day I was just hanging out. I think I literally got probably three hours of sleep before um my doctor um came in. So she came in, she checked me. Um the hospital that I went to, um, they don't even if you're 10 centimeters, they don't have you start pushing until um, they can see the baby's head. Um, so you may be 10 centimeters silent, but if the baby has not um, started coming down or you can't see the head, they will not have you push, which was kind of a good thing because then that it kind of takes the stress off of you like trying to force the baby through the birth canal. Um, so I kind of like that. So by time it was time for me to push, it was probably about four o'clock, four fifteen ish or something like that. Um, and I was ten centimeters dilated. The baby's head was um, visible. Um, when I opened my legs, as soon as you check everything, so. Um, it was time for me to push. So my um, stepdad left the room. The only people that were in the room was the nurse, 
my doctor, Fernando, and my mom um, were there. Fernando helped me with my lights. My mom did the counting. Um, and it was time to push. The doctor was like, okay, uh, you know, she came in. And it was so funny. My doctor was pregnant. She was due in like four weeks. Like she was full blown like pregnant about to birth my baby. I'm like, please don't go into labor while I'm birthing my baby. I need you to get this baby out. Um, I could start feeling the contractions like they kept asking me like do you feel like the contractions I'm like I feel them because you can kind of still feel them like in your bottom a little bit like when they're coming you can feel it um but it was like they kept saying okay you're gonna feel like you have to go to the bathroom and I'm just like well I've been feeling like I had to go to the bathroom since I've been here every time a contraction comes so that wasn't really much help for me to know when it was time for me to push because it was like I've been feeling like I have to go to the bathroom this whole time so, so the doctor was like, okay, it's time, you know, whatever. I didn't, I didn't get that urge to poop or like that, I guess, extreme urge to poop. Um, and she was like, you know, I was talking to the nurse. She said, you know, don't worry about, focus on where you're pushing from, just to focus on pushing. And so we did a couple practice pushes before the doctor doc got there. Um, and she said, you know, that's great. I think we did about two practice pushes. And then my doctor came in and we were ready to go. She had started setting up and everything. Um, or everything was already set up for her because the nurse did set um, everything up for her. So I was ready. I started pushing. Um, I pushed three times and she was out. Um, literally, like when she came out and started crying, like I just started crying extremely it was so emotional for me so emotional for fernando um i don't even know if my mom cried because my mom's the type of person that if she wanted to cry she would have left the room so i'm sure she cried like after like when she left the room because she did leave the room for a while after um the baby came out so i did three pushes the baby came out um the hospital that i went to was all about like skin to skin so they put the baby right on my chest after she was born um, I was literally like, I've never cried so hard in my life. Um, and she came, she put it right on my chest and it was just like, holy shit. Like this being just came out of me and is now on my chest. Like it, it was so emotional, so crazy. I couldn't even be any happier. Um, so Fernando cut the umbilical cord or whatever. Um, he was all nervous, like he never did this before um, i don't know and then she said i'm just gonna deliver the placenta i didn't even feel her delivering the placenta i didn't look at it i didn't even see it i was too engulfed in this baby that was sitting on my chest like they didn't clean her off or anything like literally like she was automatically in my chest and i was just in complete awe so i didn't notice anything about the placenta i didn't see it i didn't even look at it i didn't even ask about it i didn't even know when she was done with it um all I know is um, she was on my chest. I was so happy. I was crying so hard. It was so emotional. Like when I say it was the most emotional time or the most emotional I've ever felt in my life was that moment when she came out and started crying. Um, I, like I'm not like a big crier. I don't cry a lot. Um, at least not like in, in that way. It was just that moment like everything just. I was just so excited so she stayed there um so she stayed on my chest for about an hour um and then they had they were gonna move me to the um like the recovery room like where you're actually gonna um spend your stay at the um spend your stay like it's a fucking hotel but you know stay at the hotel for the few nights that you were gonna be there um right before we did um leave the labor and delivery labor and delivery she did one nurse uh, which was really awesome because she actually nursed right away, um, like after the hour of us doing skin to skin, skin to skin, she literally was ready to nurse and she attached right on, um, which was really, really awesome. I was really, really surprised um, that she did right away. Um, and then, so I probably nursed her probably for about five minutes before we had the move, so we kind of had to stop. And then they took us over to the um, the room that we were going to be staying in for the few nights. Um, when she was born, she was 5 pounds, 14 ounces, 19 inches. 
Um, so she was a really small baby, but she was kind of long. Um, but I stayed there two nights, um, two full nights, like that night, that Thursday night, Friday night, and I went home Saturday. Um, any complications? Um, I didn't need stitches. I think I needed two stitches um, after the labor, and they were the dissolvable ones. I haven't even like looked down there yet. It's been going on four weeks, and I still haven't looked down there yet. I will eventually, but I just haven't yet. Um, so I did need two stitches um, for some tearing. Um, the hemorrhoids, Lord Jesus, those are the worst. Like literally, the, like between the time I gave birth and now, the stitches and all that didn't even bother me. What bothered me the most was the hemorrhoids. Um, that was like, that's probably the most, the thing that I dreaded the most, which is crazy that out of everything, like that is the one thing that I remember as far as like pain was that um that was the biggest thing but they give you all the stuff in the hospital to treat that to you know get rid of the inflamedness and everything but that was the one thing that bothered me the most um as far as the stitches i didn't like it didn't bother me at all like the pain of the stitches didn't bother me at all i don't know because i made sure that i there's like this spray that they give you for pain relief i sprayed that like constantly maybe i didn't notice how painful it really was um but i that didn't even bother me more than the hemorrhoids um so that was the um only two things that were really bothered me the most um i did i am nursing right now um i will do i don't know if you guys want to see a separate video about how breastfeeding is or was or is going um thumbs up this video or leave me a comment down below um i don't want to get too much into the breastfeeding thing because that's a whole nother uh story in itself um uh, so if you guys do want to see that um please uh leave a comment down below and i will make sure to do that for you guys as well but that's it for my labor and delivery story um it wasn't like as dramatic or anything like that i was happy that it happened while i was at home and fernando was with me i was happy that like i wasn't somewhere and then he was somewhere else um because we were really hoping that that's what happened and that's what happened and um even though she did come two and a half weeks early i delivered her at 37 weeks and four days um she did come you know two and a half weeks early but she came when she wanted to come and that was it like it wasn't up to me no matter how much uh, I like I'm a big planner I'm big very organized um and she threw us all off my ball game like I was pretty much prepared up until that moment where I was like oh snap like I didn't get my hair done I didn't get my nails done I didn't get my feet done thank god I had shaved down there the week before so it wasn't like a freaking Boys, like this is stuff that I like I worried about when I was pregnant especially like shaving and stuff I was just so happy that I actually shaved down there um because just I mean nobody wants all the extra stuff down there so I was happy that I was I shaved the week before but literally like all the other things that I had planned I wanted to do my belly cast I didn't get to do my belly cast um because I did want to wait till I was about 38 weeks and I didn't get to 38 weeks um but you know she came when she wanted to come and she came at the time that she thought it was right for her um so i am so happy man fernando anyway let me go get her hopefully she's still asleep because i don't want to wake her um too much um so i'll go grab her and i'll be right back here she is this is my sweetheart miss nia elizabeth is her name i will put her name down in the description box uh, it is Nia Elizabeth. She is sleeping. I did just nurse her probably about um, right before I started filming this video. So she's kind of um, knocked out right now. But this is my little sweetheart. She's so tiny. Let me stand up so you can see her. She's so sweet. This is her. So beautiful. Oh my god. Like I'm so, <laughs> so excited. Um, I don't want to wake her. Um, but there she is. Um, I love these little onesies. It's like a long sleeve, but you can fold them over so they're like mittens as well so she doesn't scratch her face. I love these. I wish they made all long sleeve shirts like this, by the way. Just saying. Um, but that's her. I'm so excited. Um, 
So I'm gonna um, see you guys next time. I don't want to talk too much. I don't want to wake her, even though the TV is loud as hell in the room that she's in. But she sleeps through all like the talking and all that kind of stuff. But if you guys want me to do more videos and updates on her or with her, um, let me know um, down in the description box. Also, let me know if you guys want me to go over um, the whole breastfeeding thing. I will do that in a separate video if you guys want to see that. Comment all down in, in the comment section um, of this video. And that's it. So I hope you guys enjoy this real quick video. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.